Hi, good morning, Minister Lamela. Can you tell us about some of the transformational uh, changes in the legal sector in Miami? Well, I will have to do a two-hour sit-down if you want me to tell you of um, all the transformational changes. But there are many. On the legislative landscape, we have one of the most aggressive legislative agendas in recent times in this country. As I said in the National Assembly right now, waiting for debate um, are a number of important transformative pieces of legislation. We have for the first time a bail bill which is perhaps the most modern manifestation of the law in relation to bail across the Caribbean and even the Commonwealth. We have um, a higher purchase bill that is there. We have um, an e-transaction bill. We have uh, a constitutional reform bill that will trigger the important process of constitutional reform uh, to, to be taken to the Parliament is the most modern arbitration bill in the Caribbean. In fact, it's described as a CARICOM model because we intend to make Guyana uh, an arbitration capital of not only the Caribbean but possibly Central America. And we are working, we have begun in support of that bill, we have begun a series of training exercises commencing since last year, training the profession, training the judiciary, training the private sector, and sensitizing the population of the concept of arbitration, the importance of arbitration, and the benefits that we can derive from making iron an arbitration destination. Many of the huge contracts that are being entered into both at the level of infrastructure as well as in the oil and gas sector have arbitration clauses that require these arbitrations to be taken to different parts of the world if the uh, contracts require arbitration. That is so because we don't have the arbitration uh, infrastructure here, legislative and otherwise, that is considered modern and um, that meet international standards. We intend to change that. The arbitration industry alone is a multi-billion dollar industry. We also, as I have indicated earlier, I have received the formal documents from the Council of Legal Education inviting Guyana to comply with all the relevant technical specifications and criteria for the establishment of a regional law school in Guyana. That is in keeping with the government's objective of making Guyana uh, an academic and ed education destination in this part of the world. We are also trying to attract many uh, universities of international standing and repute to offer other academic courses and other academic training exercises in particular in the medical field and now we are moving in this direction in the legal field. Um, as I indicated also publicly this is not a Guyana law school but it is a regional law school and it is intended to attract students from across the region and even North America, Europe and further afield. That will, it is intended and expected that this law school will bring hundreds of students annually to Guyana to take off the student load at the regional law schools. Any person familiar with the issue of legal education in the Caribbean will tell you that there is a heavy overloading of um, students at the law schools and for years they have been uh, crying out for another law school in the region to be established. We are moving in that direction. Government will provide the land and the building and hand it over to the Council of Legal Education and they will be responsible for the staffing and operational um, aspects of the law school. We want to maintain um, that regional configuration because that is our treaty obligations and that is how legal um, education is administered and managed in the Caribbean.
we have a backlog of several thousands of persons from recognized universities who have Bachelor of Laws degrees for years and have not been able to gain admission into the law schools of the region. And this not only exists in Guyana, but across the Caribbean and Caribbean people living in North America, Europe, and elsewhere. <clears throat> it is expected that we will tap into that vital market. And also, once we have another law school in the region available, then we believe that it will augment um, the supply of more um, legal personnel and students interested in the study of law. The legal profession is expanding, its importance is expanding, and you know, people worry sometimes that we will have an overloading of lawyers in the system, but lawyers don't need to practice law. Law is a very important institution. Law is what glues society together. So you don't have to necessarily be a, a lawyer practicing in the courts. You can, the law prepares you for so many other endeavors and you can build uh, um, upon a strong foundation grounded in law. So this law school is intended to meet those demands and um, it's part of Guyana's transformational changes. <clears throat> As I said al also, government is proposing to um, after consulting with the judiciary and the legal profession to amend the law to increase the complement of judges in the Court of Appeal. Currently, the complement is not less than two and not more than five. That obviously is inadequate, having regard to the caseload that is leaving the uh, High Court towards the Court of Appeal for ventilation. Government is proposing and we hope that the consultation will find agreement. Government is proposing to increase that complement from not less than five to not more than nine. We believe also that the Court of Appeal should uh, become itinerant so that, you know, while there is a complement of judges sitting in the Court of Appeal in Georgetown, there can be a complement sitting in Barbies to hear appeals in Barbies and a compliment in Essequibo should there be the need to do so. And also we intend to um, resource, work with the judiciary to resource the other um, backup staff that will make this, this a reality because you, as the Chief Justice correctly pointed out, it, it, you can't only appoint judicial officers and don't give them the necessary resources and um, personal personnel backup for them to discharge their services. It's a it's a um, all encompassing exercise. So we intend to do that because our government considers the administration of justice as central to our country and an important factor in the democratic, economic, and social equation of our country. <clears throat> well, right now, if you go to the Court of Appeal, you will see that construction is ongoing and um, there is physical expansion taking place. I believe the intention is to accommodate another courtroom, but I have also alluded to the possibility of having judges go to the different counties to hear appeals. Also, in the pipeline, as I said at a recent court opening in Barbies, plans are afoot to construct a modern and massive judicial complex that will accommodate in Demerara the Court of Appeal, the High Court, Land Court, and all the attendant registries and support apparatus in one central location. So that is a more long-term objective, but we want to move ahead as quickly as possible because the system requires greater speed in the disposal of cases for there to be justice efficiently and in accordance with law.
Sorry, from national, for example, from Barbados and Trinidad, they pay a fraction um, to what diamonds are required to pay to attend the two year program at the U of the law school. With a law school being established here, could you give me an idea of what the fees would be like? I don't know if I'm We are far away. We are far away from that discussion. As I said, we have to assure the council that we are able to satisfy the technical and other requirements. And once those requirements are satisfied and we get the green light to start construction, then it, those matters are going to be within the purview of the Council of Legal Education. <clears throat> Governments of, uh, in the region contribute to the Council of Legal Education and though that contribution is sometimes used to set off um, student fees. So all those arrangements will be, addre will be addressed or put into place at the relevant time. But <coughs> excuse me, we are far away from that at this point in time. <coughs> Some of? The law revisions in Bayana. Well, I, I, as I indicated there, <clears throat> we have launched a law revision exercise of the laws of Guyana. Law revision for the layman is simply implementing and adding to the law and inserting in the law the various amendments that would have been made to those existing laws as well as to consolidate uh, new legislation that are enacted by the Parliament. The last exercise of this nature we concluded in 2012 and we plan to conclude another incarnation by the end of 2022 because from 2012 to 2022 you would appreciate that a number of pieces of legislation and law reforms would have, been, would have taken place. <clears throat> the law revision exercise now is to put them into one document, incorporate them, insert them into, the, into one volume of laws, which will be the consolidated laws of Guyana, accessible to everyone. So when you pick up the Criminal Law Offences Act, for example, and you go through it, it has all the various amendments that would have been passed over the last decade or so. That's what law revision is. And we are in the process of doing from 2012 <clears throat> to 2022. The arbitration proceedings is ongoing. There are procedural matters that are being attended to by the lawyers representing both sides, including finding agreement on the personnel who will sit on the arbitration panel. So the matter is ongoing and they have to comply with a number of procedural steps and they are in the process of doing that, the lawyers from both sides. Thank you.